Good day friends. Fat to Fit is here to help you lose fats, gain muscles and stay healthier like never before. Hello and welcome to the sixth chapter on the free course on food, nutrition and health. Today we are going to talk about proteins. There are few aspects of protein that we would cover in this module. How much protein is adequate for the human body and the role of important key amino acids like the branch chain amino acids and other few amino acids. So how much protein is essential for the human body? Well, ideally RDA or recommended dietary allowance for protein is 0.8 gram per kg body weight per day. This amounts to 56 grams per day for average sedentary man and 46 grams per day for average sedentary woman. Though this is meager amount may be enough to prevent downright deficiency disease Study shows that this is far from sufficient to ensure optimal health and body composition. It turns out that the right amount of proteins for any individual depends on many factors including their activity, age, muscle mass, physique goal and current state of health. For competitive athletes or people looking to gain muscles through strength training, the optimal protein requirement is 1.2 grams per 2 1.8 grams per kg body weight per day. Anything more than that might not yield any substantial benefit even for athletes. Now let us talk about essential amino acids. The branch chain amino acids. The three amino acids are leucine, isoleucine and valine. These amino acids are grouped together because they are only three amino acids to have chain that branches off to one side. Hence, they are referred to as the branch chain amino acids. Of the three amino acids, leucine is mainly responsible for muscle protein synthesis for maintaining and building muscles. The BCA stimulates a protein named as the mTOR, which is important for muscle growth. The amount of leucine that is required to start the signaling process for muscle growth is actually higher than the amount which is actually used during the muscle building process. The excess leucine is oxidized and eliminated once the signaling work is done. This is why protein foods with good amount of leucine are better for muscular growth and development. The main principle to remember is not only particular quantity of protein is essential for muscle growth but also 2.2 to 3 gram leucine per meal will ensure maximal MPS or muscle protein synthesis. So if you consume 10 grams of essential amino acids in any meal, this requirement is covered and you do not require additional leucine supplementations. Beside leucine also helps to regulate blood glucose level, stimulate wound healing and produces growth hormone. Now isoleucine. Isoleucine is involved in the muscle metabolism and heavily concentrated in muscular tissue. Isoleucine is more effective than valine and less than leucine in stimulating muscle protein synthesis. It's also important for immune function hemoglobin production and energy regulation. Valine on the other hand helps stimulate muscle growth and regeneration and is involved in energy production. Deficiency of valine may cause fatty liver formation. Branch chain amino acid supplements may provide impressive benefits in certain circumstances, especially when it comes to muscle growth and physical performance. However, Branch chain amino acids can be found in whole protein supplements as well as in large variety in rich foods. Therefore, taking branch chain amino acid supplements may not be essential, especially if you get enough sufficient proteins through your diet or through a protein supplementation. Now, let us talk about other key amino acids. Glutamine. Glutamine is an important amino acid with many functions in the human body. It is a building block of protein and critical part of immune system. Glutamine is also plays an important role in intestinal health. 
Glutamine is important energy source for intestinal and immune cells. Your body naturally produces this amino acids and it is found in many foods. Yet, you may be unsure if you need extra glutamine from supplements for optimal health. Like many other amino acids, it exists in two different forms, L-glutamine and D-glutamine. If the body's need for glutamine is greater than the ability to produce it, your body may break down protein stores such as muscles to release the additional amino acids. Additionally, the function of immune systems can be compromised when insufficient amount of glutamines are available. Studies have also reported that glutamine supplements may improve health, decrease infections and lead to shorter hospital stays after surgery. For these reasons, high protein diets, high glutamine diets or glutamine supplements are often prescribed after major injuries like burns. Now we talk about arginine. Arginine is typically considered as a semi-essential amino acid. That means you can usually get it from the diet alone. This amino acid directly produces nitric oxide. Nitric oxide helps your blood vessels relax and expand. This is important for regulating your blood flow. Your doctor may recommend eating arginine rich foods or taking arginine supplementation if you have certain conditions that affect your blood vessels and heart. For example, they recommend taking arginine supplements to help coronary artery disease, peripheral vascular disease or erectile dysfunction. In other cases, arginine supplements may increase your risk of heart problems. If you have a well-balanced diet, you probably get enough arginine from foods you eat. But if you have a history of certain health conditions, your doctor may recommend taking arginine supplementation. Next, we come to citrulline. Citrulline produces several important effects in the body. One major way it works is in vasodilation. Vasodilation refers to the widening of the arteries or veins. It is associated with lower blood pressure and increased blood flow. After citrulline is consumed, some is converted into another amino acid called the arginine. Arginine is converted into a molecule called nitric oxide which causes vasodilation of blood vessels by relaxing them and constricting them. Interestingly, consuming citrulline may increase arginine in the body more than consuming arginine itself. This is because of the difference in how the body processes and absorbs arginine and citrulline. The increase in nitric oxide and blood flow may be one of the processes involved in citrulline's beneficial effects on exercise performance. Although citrulline isn't an amino acid used to directly build proteins, it has been shown to increase protein synthesis by stimulating an important signaling pathway involved in muscle building process. In the next chapter, we would cover important sources of protein and how you can plan a diet with high protein amount. If you have any queries or concern, please feel free to add a comment and I'll respond to you as soon as I can. And I hope you found the information valuable and thank you for watching it. Take care of yourself and your family. I'll see you in my next video.